Today, Deep Cool is introducing its new LS series liquid coolers. This series deploys a new fourth generation pump design that is touted as having improved micro channels alongside its three phase motor. We have the 360mm LS720 in for review. This unit features a trio of 120mm ARGB PWM fans, and that's together with the eye catching infinity mirror cap design for the pump block unit. Coming in at £119.99 pence in the UK, let's take a closer look at the new Deepcool LS720. Deepcool uses a conventional 27mm thick black aluminium 360mm class radiator for the unit. It's good to see the continued inclusion of Deepcool's anti-leak technology on the radiator. This is via the EPDM pressure relief bag that contracts to create a void when pressure rises to relieve the pressure inside the radiator. In theory, this helps to reduce the risk of leakage, which is a clear positive. The 410mm long braided tubes have a decent degree of flexibility to them. Alongside the flexibility of the tubes, there's also a reasonable degree of adjustment at the entry points to the block. Two plastic cable guides are pre-mounted on the reasonably thick tubing, and this is a nice quality touch by Deepcool. One of the more simplistic benefits of Deepcool's in-house pump block or cold plate design, whatever you want to say, is basically that they realistically avoid many of the patent infringement or quirkiness with regards to Acetec designs in particular. The cold plate is bare copper with pre-applied thermal paste. Deepcool highlights support for modern Intel and AMD platforms, including high-end desktop, and there's also support in place for the upcoming AMD AM5 platform too. In typical Deepcool fashion, the pump block unit is absolutely massive. It measures in at 86 by 74 by 57 millimeters. To be honest though, we wouldn't expect too many interference issues, aside from ITX systems and perhaps if you go RAM either side of the CPU socket, like on a high-end desktop platform. Deepcool deploys the eye-catching infinity mirror display that actually does feature a plastic cover with the Deepcool logo on there. This faceplate can be removed and rotated in 90 degree increments to allow for correct orientation of the logo, irrespective of one's installation preference for the cooler. There's also an additional blank plate provided that can be installed and this is provided to allow users some degree of customization over the visual appearance on the plastic cover. Two light loops project an eye-catching ARGB LED glow through the infinity mirror display, which looks absolutely awesome to my eyes. The fourth gen pump unit is three pin 12 volt DC powered and uses a three phase motor. It runs at a lofty speed rating of 3100 RPM. And given that it's 12 volt DC controlled, you don't really have necessarily great speed control like you do with some of the PWM pump competitors from the likes of Acetec. The trio of Deepcool's FC120 fans feature translucent white blades that are optimized for static pressure performance. These 120mm fluid dynamic bearing fans operate at a speed range of 500 to 2250 RPM and are PWM controlled. The lack of a clear 0 RPM silent mode is disappointing for a premium cooler but I guess most people will argue that 500 RPM on the low side is perfectly fine for most usage. What is a point of contention though is the proprietary connectors and cables that Deepcool chooses to use for combined fan and ARGB control. Some people are okay with proprietary, some people aren't. Thankfully though, Deepcool does a really good job at implementing the daisy chain system with those proprietary connectors and that carries fan speed control and of course power and ARGB lighting control through one single cable for each of the fans. So when you daisy chain them, that's a very neat approach that really does minimize the number of cables sprawling across your motherboard or even just feeding into the motherboard itself. And with regards to the ARGB lighting, this uses my preferred technique, which is just handing control over to the motherboard. So you can synchronize with your other components very easily, provided you've got a competent motherboard software solution, which most are these days. RGB lighting for the coolers, fans, and the infinity mirror display is absolutely awesome in my opinion. The lighting is bright, the colors are clear, and the granularity is very smooth. I really do like the lighting on this cooler very much. Back on the topic of cables, only a single three pin fan connector, that's to power the pump, 
and a proprietary cable connector emanate from the pump block unit. So as already pointed out, this is really ideal for minimizing cable sprawl, particularly across the CPU socket area from the pump block unit. Warranty is very positive for the £119.99 LS720, with Deepcool giving the unit five years worth of coverage. That's excellent coverage and compares quite nicely with the likes of Corsair and Arctic, who are particularly strong competitors. The fans are rated at 50,000 hours mean time between failure, which is slim, but when you've got that five year warranty, perhaps it's not too much to worry about. Installation was a process that I found to be a little bit more time consuming and a little bit more frustrating than it really needed to be. For reference, the Deepcool LS720 took me roughly about twice the time to install as it takes for a typical Acer Tech 7th gen cooler that I've worked with quite recently. So first you screw the appropriate brackets onto the bottom of the pump block unit. But Deepcool doesn't make it hugely clear that each bracket has a very specific position with respect to the two bin, so it's easy to make a mistake there. The default AM4 backplate is held in position with four of Deepcool's thumbscrew standoffs. The pump block unit then sits on these standoffs and is screwed into position. Then the radiator and fans can be installed, the cables connected and the Deepcool logo inside the infinity mirror display rotated as desired. I'd highly recommend installing the fans on the radiator whilst it's still outside of the chassis because the small proprietary cables and daisy chaining are difficult to deal with otherwise. The final step is to then connect up the cables and this is where Deepcool supplies breakout adapters that can be used to link SATA power, 4-pin PWM control, 3-pin ARGB and the proprietary fan connections. So yeah, it wasn't that bad overall to be honest, there was a few more steps involved than usual. But I just thought the process was just a little bit more fiddly, a little bit more hands-on than the hand-twisting brackets, for example, with Acer Tech and just standard fan connections that we see with some competing coolers. And one other thing I want to point out with respect to installation is that on our AMD platform, we installed in our usual approach of the tube sitting near the RAM slots on the motherboard. Deepcool does, however, highlight that on the Intel platforms, they're suggesting that you're better off with the tubes in this six o'clock position. So the tubes towards the bottom near the PCIe slot effectively, because they've highlighted that in their internal testing, you can get better performance, cooling performance, versus the tubes in the three o'clock position. We're not using an Intel test system, so we haven't validated that, but it's something that you could check out in your own testing if you buy this cooler and put it on an Intel platform. For testing, we're using our usual AMD test system. This uses a Ryzen 9 5950X processor overclocked to 4.45 GHz using around 1.3 to 1.312 volts under load. So that's about 220 to 230 watts of package power. Pretty hefty load indeed. And then we also check with Precision Boost Overdrive to see what the coolers can handle. The motherboard is a Gigabyte B550 Aorus Master, which has an excellent VRM solution and good cooling on there too. We use a Gigabyte RTX 2060 Super Zero Decibel Mode graphics card, so we basically allow the fans to sit in their silent mode so they don't interfere with our cooling results or our noise results. Clean power comes from a Seasonic 1kW titanium rated TX1000 power supply. And our chassis of choice is the Fractal Design Meshify 2, and we're using three cooling fans. They're all 140mm, two as intake and one as exhaust. Our test procedure is using a 30 minute loop drive of Cinebench R23 NT and we record the steady state temperature of the processor towards the end of that 30 minute run. The ambient conditions are kept around about 22 to 24 degrees Celsius and where the temperatures do deviate outside of this window slightly, we will put in additional test runs just to ensure the validity of our data. As always, if you want more details on the test hardware, the procedures, the comparison coolers, then check out the previous reviews that we put on the YouTube channel and also, more importantly, the written review on the main KitGuru webpage. Let's jump into the test results. Let's start off with noise performance at 100% fan speed. This is important for getting an indication of where our performance expectations should lie based on noise output. Run at 51 dBA full noise output, the Deepcool LS720 is a loud CPU cooler. Even by triple fan all-in-one standards, the unit is very loud. Competitors from the likes of Corsair, MSI and Thermaltake run slightly quieter, though every bit of noise reduction is valued with Deepcool outputting at 51 decibels. Of course, there is ample speed curve control as low as 500 RPM to reduce the fans away from their 2250 RPM top speed, though the lack of PWM pump does limit just how much fine-tuning capacity a user has. 
Super high noise output may bring acoustic irritation, but it certainly does not irritate when it comes to all out cooling performance. Put simply, the Deepcool LS720 is a liquid cooling powerhouse on our overclocked Ryzen 9 5950X test system. Cooling the chip to a delta temperature of 54 degrees is outstanding. This beats all of the other coolers in our charts, including Acer Tech 7th gen competitors with high speed fans. When coupled with the extremely high noise output from the LS720, it's blatantly obvious that Deepcool is trying to brute force its way to the top of cooling charts but that may be a tolerable solution for many users. And for those to whom it isn't, let's take a look at 40 dBA noise lock performance. In order to get the unit running at 40 dBA, we had to reduce the three FC120 fans all the way down to 43% duty cycle, or around 1300 RPM recorded from their 2250 RPM top speed. This is a huge reduction in operating speed and really emphasizes just how aggressive Deepcool has been with its bias for thermal performance as opposed to tolerable noise output. As a note, the pump was retained at its 3100 RPM top speed, which is likely the scenario you're gonna be running given the limited DC control abilities. When locked to 40 dBA noise output, Deepcool's LS720 still manages chart topping performance in our AMD based test system. That's a strong positive, particularly given how much of the fan speed we had to cut away to reach 40 dBA. The margins are now tighter with Thermaltake's 360 mm all-in-one being only slightly behind in performance. Nevertheless, Deepcool's LS720 tops this chart and still has plenty of fan speed headroom left in the tank if you really need a surge in cooling performance. That's pretty impressive. With the fans back to full speed, our PBO test unsurprisingly puts the Deepcool LS720 to the top of our chart. The cooler manages a similar all-core clock speed to Sapphire's, also very loud, Nitro Plus S360A Acetec built cooler, but Deepcool's thermal result and power managed are superior. Just shy of 230 watts of AMD CPU package power handled by the Deepcool LS720 is an outstanding cooling result, even if the 100% fan speed noise output is very high. We also see strong performance in the domain of incidental VRM cooling, Realistically, this is tied to the high-speed fans moving such volumes of air in the vicinity of our motherboard's VRM heatsink. That results in a particularly strong 100% fan speed VRM temperature reading. The result isn't so positive when locked to 40 dBA, as a multitude of other coolers are more competitive now. Either way, though, there's no cause for concern with VRM temperatures, even with the LS720's fan speeds constricted. Deepcool's new LS720 360mm all-in-one liquid cooler is a pretty simple product to analyse. The unit is an absolute performance powerhouse based on our test results on our AMD platform. Deepcool clearly achieves this outstanding thermal performance by running high-speed, high-noise fans, but to many users, that's absolutely fine. And to users who don't like that, even with the cooler restricted to 40 decibels noise output, the cooling performance was still very, very good. Aesthetically, Deep Cool has also nailed it there, in my opinion. I think the ARGB lighting on the FC120 fans looks good and isn't too over the top. Plus the dual RGB strips and general appearance of that infinity mirror display are absolutely superb. I like that Deep Cool allows for a little user adjustment with the pump block unit's plastic cover too. Plus, simple control through a motherboard vendor's ARGB software is very much preferential, in my opinion. Now clearly there are some downsides, but realistically these are pretty minor. I found the installation process a little bit more time consuming and a little bit more difficult to follow than with competing Acetec coolers. Proprietary fan cables certainly won't appeal to everybody when it comes to simple replacement or upgrades, but at least Deepcool does a good job with reduced cable count and effective daisy chaining. And the full speed noise output is genuinely really high. So an effective custom cooling curve is a must. It's just a shame that the pump isn't PWM, so it doesn't have outstanding inherent control abilities. With that said, there are so many obvious benefits with the Deepcool LS720. Not least is that the cooler comes with a five-year warranty, which is excellent. And the retail price of £119.99 in the UK, or about $139.99 US dollars and about €144.90, that is very very competitive indeed. Not only do I feel that Deepcool's LS720 is a clear value king when it comes to 360mm all-in-one liquid coolers, but it's simultaneously one of the highest performance units 
on the market in terms of sheer thermal performance based on our AMD test system results. That really is an uncanny combination that should have enthusiasts running a hot AMD CPU very excited indeed. So I've been Luke Hill for Kit Group. Thank you for watching our video review of the Deepcool LS720 all-in-one liquid cooler. Let us know what you think in the comments section down below. Are you impressed by the level of performance offered for this £120, let's call it, liquid cooler? Is the noise output a little bit high for you? Or do you really like that RGB system? Let us know in the comments section down below. As always, if you like this video, give us a like and subscribe to all that YouTube stuff. Please do check out the written review on the Kickeroo webpage. That really supports us very, very well. Uh, check us out on Patreon. Buy a cool t-shirt from our merch store. Hit us up on social media. I will check you in the next one.